Welcome back to SOS MBA. I've got a buck 110 I've been using for many years and I wanted to do some more modifications to this uh, to have a little bit more fun with it and, and I like this is one of my favorites to carry. I always carry a buck 110 most times and uh, when I'm not carrying a cheaper knife you know some just crappy old knife that just clips in my pocket but usually I like to make a sheath for these and I'm going to do that today. I've already, you know, I've been, you know, I've, I've installed the, uh, the quick thumb, uh, release here. So you, you can, you can use, utilize your thumb to open it one handed. It's for one handed opening, or you can, you know, grab right here and give it a flick and it opens up. It's not, you know, it's very low tech. You know what I mean? It's got some heft to it. Uh, the backside works really nice for, uh, ferro rods. That's why I kind of carry it. I like to carry it for different reasons like that. It's good self-defense. I mean, it's, it's always sharp. And um, it's good for skinning. There's many, many uses for this knife. So today, I'm going to do a few more modifications to it. And what I'm going to be doing is doing finger grooves. Now, you can get your finger grooves any way you want. You can use, you know, one of these templates like I have here. This is just a, um, uh, this is a, uh, one of those printed, it's a, it's basically a printed uh, brass knuckle, but it's not brass knuckle. It's made of a different material, but it's uh, uh, it's printed out. You can take something like this and set it to certain spots and get your grind marks and then give her a flip around or bring it back down some more to get your next marks. They make buck knives that already have the finger grooves. But I wanted to take a buck knife. <laughs> they, they make them, they're, they're uh, tactical looking. You know what I mean? They're black. And it, I'm like, come on now. Do it to one of these. You, you hardly ever see stuff like that. So make it custom. You know, same size. It just needs the grind marks in it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. So I just, you just draw your, you draw your little circles and then uh, just grind them out with you know a right angle or something like that just grind them out and and once you're done give it a nice polish and there you go soap and water just get that buffed out just got to get it polished up around the corners there <laughs> my workstation has become a mess today uh, <laughs> let's uh let's figure out what we need i got uh, a couple of pieces of this is nine ounce i believe and we need to figure out just how big we want this thing and I want there to be kind of a slant in there and I'm probably going to do this. So a draw, let's see, which side do I want to draw from this side? I'll, I'll put it on my right hand side because I kind of want it towards my butt, you know, behind my back and kind of pull it out like this, something like that. And so you kind of want to figure out what you're going to be removing and so what we'll do is we'll turn it this way and we'll turn the you got to turn the knife in the opposite direction of the way you're going to be pulling it and kind of sideways like this and we'll just bring it in to there and then I'll take a sharpie and I'm going to go ahead and figure out where this thing's going to be. I want enough room. Let's just go ahead and do it like this. I want there to be plenty of room. This is for if you're doing stuff like this at home. 
you can kind of get an idea. That's the only reason why I do this. So that gives me plenty of room there. Once I stitch this up, you got to imagine this is going to come in more. So you want to make sure there's a, about a pinky distance on one side at least. And then about half a pinky on the other. Something like that. And then I, I space it about a half a pinky at the bottom. Just to give me a little bit of play. And m most leather will stretch once you get it wet anyways. Uh, so now that I've got that kind of figured out. Uh, I usually lay a bunch of templates around. I'll try and figure out what my point here is going to be. Like I said, I reach a lot of redesigns when I do this stuff. So over here, it's going to come up. And then we'll probably go out a bit. We'll go up. I freehand all this stuff because... I don't know what I'm going to do next, like what it's going to look like, I think. Let's just come in. Then we'll go out right about here. Something like that. And then I'm going to want my belt loop to go right here give or take because I'll probably shift it because just to save some leather on either side because I won't leave let's see let's bring this in there's a little bit more leather here at the top that's pretty close and then when we stitch this up the stitching will run right on this edge here and then we're going to do the edges and the stitching like this all around through here. I'm just kind of drawing this just to show you. My kids are going crazy again. Uh, just to show you. That's where that stitching will go. And then when it comes around here. That stitching is going to come down. Through here. So that's all going to be stitched. That's all going to be one big thing of stitching. Stitching. Probably. Probably curve it off into this other stitch. Ahead and carve that in and up like that and this is drastic so with that being so drastic it's going to come out more yeah it'll come out more so it'll end up being right about there once I get that cut now when you get this cut out you got to marry it with the other piece and then cut it again now that I've got that cut out, that would be, like I said, this is this way, and you flip it around, and this would go behind your back, like this. You reach behind your back towards your booty, with your other hand, obviously, and you pull that out. And you just got to come up with your artwork. One thing that you should do, let's see, before I get started with this, I need to know where everything is. And... In order to do that, it takes setting it here, sizing that up like this, and that's about right, something like that. Now, I know where all that's going to be, and what I would do is grab this tool here and go ahead and figure out where the stitches are going to go. <laughs> my kids they're worried about the animals it's pouring down rain of course I'll swoop that in a minute I just want to get these sides first yeah I got the sides figured out so what I do now, go around like this. Just take your time because those dots will show up. If you make a mistake, you'll see those dots <laughs> somewhere where you didn't want them. What up, kid? Yes. 
she wants an apple. Uh, my neighbor's apple tree is about to fall down. He's got a lot of uh, fer fermentation going to go on. I watched, uh, <laughs> it's so funny. I watched these, uh, you know, whole pack of freaking deer uh, get into those fermented apples. And they got drunk <laughs> and started fighting. <laughs> Running around crazy. Uh, it was hilarious. We got all kinds of weird stuff that goes on out here. I had a dude jump the hill next to our house, not too far down the road. And uh, he was listening to... All I heard was Leonard Skinner, and it was a Camaro. <laughs> so I swear, I can't make this stuff up. All I heard was Leonard Skinner. It was blaring. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, there was a... Camaro, a white, uh, some, I don't know, some kind of really fast and loud, crazy redneck machine. I think I'm going to do two separate stitchings. I wasn't going to, but I think I am. I just think I'd like it better. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do two separate stitchings. It's one, like one solid, actually, as you were. Uh, see, it's just a constant loop it's one steady flow of stitching and you can do saddle stitch you know back and forth you know two different uh, things these little nicks and stuff don't worry about that when you get towards the end of the project you're going to be you're going to want some kind of um uh, something you can smooth but uh, a lot of us sand a lot of us out there sand when we get around these edges we take that same tool I was using, like just a Dremel or something, and you just sort of go around these little edges. You can do that, and it's it's way easier. Or you can use a file. I take a, uh, I take sandpaper and I put it on my doll here, and I, I'll go through like this. You can do that too, and kind of do this, and you can work around those edges. It helps with those funky edges where it's all jacked up looking, but you want it to be a nice transition. And not the or smooth transition, not this funky like jip right here, a little jip right there at the top. It, that's not supposed to be there. It'll, that'll come off in the end. But now that I got that done, I take my other piece. One's the inside, one's the outside, and this is a bit. Th this is a bit thicker. And when I said before, when you order leather, leather, and uh, shoulders or whatever size you get, when you order leather, leather, sometimes it's thicker. It's, uh, some sections of it might have a thicker patch to it just because they say it, it usually says like eight, nine ounces. It'll say eight and intact and then nine. And that's because they, they're not too sure which side has, might have some nine on it or something or some 10. Uh, anyway, I figured I'd share that. Uh, I don't like to waste leather. I know a lot of folks, uh, frown upon, you know, if you get too crazy with stuff, it's like, man, you really must not care. You got to find, what it is, is you got to find the closest point to will save you a little piece in case you ever need it for something. Uh, I save all my scraps and then I go through them about every year and I start dumping stuff that I can't use. And uh, for this, you're going to touch, like I said, you're going to be sanding these edges. So don't worry about if you get a little bit of Sharpie on the edge of that. Or you'll use some edge black. Edge black is what you see on a lot of holster projects or sheath projects where they paint the edges and they let dry. Now, edge black is a talented thing. It's not something for the uh, not so steady hand. If you don't have a steady hand, don't do edge black. <laughs> just just do some bowstring wax or some you know stiff wax uh, along the edge because. I, I've seen a lot of cases where folks use that, uh, they use that edge black and their hands shake you a little bit and they'll end up tapping it here and then they'll run it and then it starts to flow into the project and you're like, oh, and then the other thing, if you don't have a steady hand as far as calm, you know, to be able to set it down without fiddling with it or something to hold it, then you could end up setting it down and then the stuff just blotches. 
and goes all over your leather. And it's got black all over the place. A big black splat somewhere. I've had a lot of situations like that. Uh, leather shears. Something good you can get. And these, just because it says leather, doesn't mean it's... See how tough that is? It takes a lot of elbow grease to do this. I'm, I, I put a lot of pressure on these to get this cut. So Now this is from LSM. And for those of you out there that have a YouTube channel or a company and you want to get some stamps made for leather, uh, it's from LSM, Leather Stamp Maker. That's literally what they're called. You can look them up and they, they, they have a fast turnaround. They're pretty reasonable in price and they make every kind of leather stamp imaginable from so, something like this, as small as this, letter, letters, you know, whatever, logos, big thing of flames even big sheets but stuff like this requires being in a press and most folks don't have that kind of technology at their house to do that sort of thing uh, but you want to get your project wet and then after the project's wet then apply where this is going to go and uh, press as hard as you can in that press and hold it tight and you could apply the handle and stamp it by hand with a hammer, but it doesn't leave the impressions like you want because it misses a few things or it's kind of sideways or something. It doesn't look right. Uh, the press always works better for me, but if you don't have a press, then I would suggest sticking to the smaller stuff because once you get into the bigger stuff, you've got to use a press. All right, let's do the unveiling and see how bad it looks. Stuck on there pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. That turned out really good. That's going to look really cool on there. I'm just going to leave it like that. No fancy stuff. I'm not doing a bunch of crazy. The more you add, the more it really takes away. <laughs> to be honest. Less is more sometimes. You know what I mean? There we go. Okay. You two go talk about bikes over there. They're over here talking about bicycles. Okay, go over there and talk about it. <laughs> All right. Wouldn't be SOS if there wasn't kids, right? Got to have some kids around. That's what it's all about. All right. There's that. And now I'm ready for some adhesive. And I can go ahead and apply some adhesive on here. I can dye afterwards. I could dye now. I probably should just go ahead and dye it. Let it dry. And then... Come back and apply adhesive, sandwich them together with my clips, and then we'll get to stitching. Yeah, went with I went with this option. <laughs> Go ahead and just start adding some leather to uh, leather dye. Now, if it's really wet, you're gonna have to be patient letting it soak in. If it's not as wet, then it'll absorb pretty quick. You just apply a little bit and you can come back to it. I'll get the back side on the next trip down here. I think that I think I just want to do a little bit of time this time to kind of get that going and go ahead and get the back side of this one. I'll worry about the inside when I come back down to mess with it. I normally would just flip them over back and forth and keep working on them, but I think this time I'm just going to let it settle. And then I'm going to try and add some more color in there to this whole thing and that'll be nice. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this down here, let it set, and then I'll come back and I'll apply some more. <laughs> I got to keep whispering right behind me. Oh, man. Oh, hi, Drew. I was just there at the
Just like this. Just gonna kind of go around. Let's see, we're gonna see kind of where that's gonna go. Kids, chill out. Never know what these kids are gonna start saying. They get pretty wild. I just got them watching some kind of animal planet. Hey, Ellie, what's your favorite animal? Horse? Mm -hmm. You like and horses? Love and lovebirds? Uh huh. Is daddy supposed to get you a lovebird? Mm hmm. And you're going to take care of it? Uh huh. And a horse. And a horse? Uh huh. Well, daddy's going to finish the barn first, kid. Got to do the barn, then the horse sits. That's mm -hmm. why I kept telling Gally. She doesn't listen. We need to wait That's till I get order. Here we go. All right. Boo, can you start handing me those clips? Like these clips? Mm hmm. No, these clips. Like the lips? There you go. Here. There we go. Let me get my other pieces on. Hang on. You got to bring it together like this. You slide it over slightly. You try not to mess with the project too much. Bring it over. This keeps from getting a bunch of tool marks. If you're having trouble keeping the tool marks down, this prevents a lot of the tool marks. All right, clip. No, 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 no. I can't do it. She just tool marked it. <laughs> it's all right, though. Here, let me see. Let me see. Let me try and squeeze it in there. There we go. Now let's do the bottom. Like this. There you go. That. This prevents all those crazy tool marks. Plus, it allows you to use less clips. There we go. Now we just let that set and dry. And once again, this is not a drill bit. It's a punch. It's a very tiny punch. Because when you do 10 ounce, 9 ounce, you need something a little bit thicker. And just follow the holes that you made all the way around. We'll groove to the top of this thing. Just gotta open my tool up a little bit and see how much. That seems about right. Let's go ahead and put it there. Little groove at the top. Like that. Something like that. It's a little bit of like a filler groove kind of thing. Some more dye. Put it right in that hole there. Just add some to it, huh? So just let that set too long. Point that in right there. Then I guess I should just go ahead and go over it one more time real quick before I start stitching it. And you're just stitching it up. You gotta make sure you uh and I gotta come back and cut my holes out for my belt. I'll get back to that. Just like that. And come back.
just applied the sheen. You want to apply a sheen, it gives a nice glossy look. And there you have it. Rounded out the edges, rounded out the sides like I said I would. Tucked in the stitch. It's all nice and neat and ready to be worn. There's a major difference in weight and the feel of the blade. You don't have those finger grooves. So it's really just a, you know, it feels like you're gripping like just a pipe or something, right? But then as soon as you change it up a notch to putting those nice shallow curves in there for your fingers, it really does, you can see it meets every one of those digits and it puts my thumb right there on that tab. It's a really good feel. I'm, I think I like this better than most of the other buck knives that they've uh, they've come up with as far as with the grooves. They did the finger grooves and the tactical stuff. And here you go. I got, I found, here, set that down. I found the tactical one. I couldn't find it before, but I found it. This is the buck, and this is their buck with the finger grooves. And see, now if you marry them up, it's not... It's not exactly the same, but it's close. You see what I mean? It's got, let's see if I can zoom in for you there. There you go. But see, it's got the grooves, but it's not as shallow of a groove. And it just does not look as cool. And this one, mm, it's not much of a weight difference, a little bit between the two. But if you want tactical version, then that's your tactical version of that. And with this one here, so you can kind of see side by side comparison. The, doesn't seem like the blades as good a quality as this blade here, and but I figured I would share with you that part. Even with a regular buck knife in there, it's really snug. That's what you get. Nice snug carry, and you're going to want to bend this around a bit and work it a bit to get it exactly in the position you want before it sets and dries. That's one of the things that you'll have to do. So this one, you wanna make sure you go ahead, and press it in there and get all the little places that you want it where you want it to be. You'll have to work it around a little bit. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Please help with my algorithm and share and like the videos. It does help the channel get discovered. Uh, I am under uh, under attack by YouTube at the moment. They are threatening more strike issues. I've already had two strikes since I've had the channel. Had the channel. So uh, one kind of in the first couple of years and then uh, recently. And I've had to fight that off. And uh, they don't want you showing a lot of stuff that I show. So it's unfortunate that a lot of things that I say or do, uh, it does help play music in the background when I make a lot of these videos because it does drown out that uh, AI algorithm hunt bot that uh, tracks down and kills channels. All right. God bless you guys. Take care.